Okay, well, I, I mean, what do you want me to say, guys? The guy's listed as Zerg. He play he's always played Zerg, as far as I know. Like, he was in WCS Challenger League as Zerg. He is listed on Wikipedia as Zerg. He's on Ligulac as Zerg. But he's going to play Protoss. This guy's got his head screwed on right. He, know he knows the good race when he sees one. <laughs> to the top right-hand side, our purple Protoss player is going to be NXE. And to the upper left-hand side. It is going to be the green Zerg player from Exile 5. It is Peppy. How are we all doing today? Hope we're all having a good one. This is our third day of the USC Championship. The third of seven. And again, we're going to stream every day now because we do have some championship bracket matches to bring you guys on Thursday. In fact, I think they just got announced. If you give me a moment or two, I will actually give you the uh, list of teams or players who are going to be casting on Thursday. So give me a moment. I don't think it's the ones in Wikipedia. I want the Team Liquid Fred link. Yes, so on Thursday, we are going to be uh, casting the following championship bracket matches, best of threes, to uh, entertain you guys. So we're going to kick things off with Gummyho versus Snoot. We're going to go into Keen versus Ryo. That will follow up with Panda Bear Me versus True, Puck versus Probe, and Alive versus the winner of Gummy Ho and Snoot. So we're basically just doing some championship matches a day early just to get you guys some content and just to kind of make sure we get to cast even more of these games, which would otherwise maybe go without a cast otherwise. As we set on up and get ready to... Uh Get ready to rumble. Going to be seeing this uh, Overlord just uh, moving around right now. So Overlord moving around and we see a probe just popping out. And we're moving down to the low ground. So probe going to move down to the low ground here. And we're just going to be seeing the uh, Adept coming out in a moment or so. Early game so far is nothing really too crazy. Again, I'm still a little bit caught off guard that NXZ is going to play uh, Protoss here. So it's um, a little bit, um, a little bit interesting. And I'm um, intrigued to see what this uh, leads into. So, just going to be seeing the uh, dead moving over to the left hand side here early. And just going to be seeing with a Twilight Council as his early build order. Now, no rubber facility with this, so it does look to be probably just a resonating glaive space setup in the early stages for NXZ. It's just going to be starting up that resonating glaive, so starting that already. And a couple more gates coming down at the front of the natural expansion as well. Setting up into that, you're going to be seeing these couple more overlords currently building from Peppy. And some drones continue to come out as well. He's just setting up into three bases. Now, obviously, we got to see a little bit of his ZVP beforehand against Hero. Very aggressive and kind of crazy builds. And he's not doing anything at all similar right now against NXZ. Which, obviously, is probably because he was going up against Hero before. And he probably maybe feels not quite as confident against Hero as he does NXZ. Which is a pretty fair idea. Pretty fair sort of... Um, it's pretty fair sort of, you know, reasoning, I suppose. And there's going to be seeing these Zerglings just gathering up together on the Natural Expansion. It's going to be seeing the uh, Rotron will finish here as well very shortly. Out of Peppy. Nexus building on the third on the gold base. So third base coming down very aggressively here from NXZ very early in the game. Because it is just going to be that resonating glaive. So we'll protect that with the Adepts and we'll harass across the map very shortly as well. Try and see if you can get some damage done. Peppy utilizing his early Numitez Carapace to come on through and have a little bit of a uh, scout around. So... Just seeing everything here, basically. He sees that researching glaives, sees the three gates. Now, the one thing he doesn't see is the third base, because he just probably doesn't expect it to be taken on the gold. So, that's maybe one thing that Peppy just doesn't quite figure out yet. He is on his way up to check there, though, so you will see it shortly. And that will be a complete set of information for him, then, in these early stages. The devs continue to come through the top side. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, devs continuing to uh, move forwards and look to see what else is going to be happening. So, devs just moving around. And end up cancelling up there because there's no gold base. And he runs into some Lings and Roaches on the low ground. In fact, some Lings coming in from the other side. Going to surround these Adepts for a couple of moments. Allowing these uh, Roaches to get a little bit more damage done. Continue to dish out a little bit of something to these Adepts right now. Adepts going to back away over to the right-hand side once again. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, gold base continuing to uh, be saturated right now with probes. So, I mean, just setting up into this is Robo finishes as well. 
Peppy looks as though he wants to just bust this down. No more Phoenix of Ravages, more Lings being made. Puts down an Evo Chamber behind this, but definitely will look to make some progress right now if this Roach Ravager falls as he pushes on forwards. And let's see if there's going to be anything to defend with, honestly. Pylons on the high ground will obviously help a lot, but now you can just sort of pull away towards the natural expansion as well if you would like to. A couple of of bars landing on that pylon, and an overlord in this position here would be so nice just to have the high ground vision to bile from the low ground. That would actually really, really be useful. As you can see, a couple of Lings taking some shots, Ravager taking a couple of shots again, and just continue to drop those bars again. It's difficult without the high ground vision. Now he's going to get it. Where's he getting it from? Oh, Watchtower. Well, I'm stupid. He had high ground vision all along. Well, ignore me then. As we see some Lings actually sneak by in towards the natural expansion. I'm going to try and get a couple of work kills here. He's already killed three or four. So a little bit of damage being done. Crows of Balan again, that robot facility. And I mean, that's a really tough place for it to be in because there's no easy way to defend this without coming down to the low ground, which is, of course, not really what you want to do. A couple more Bows and that will die. And maybe even before more, the next Immortal comes out, if he moves towards here soon, looks like the Immortal will indeed be able to come on out here. as Bows will finish it up, so... Two Immortals out for NXZ, he whoops in a big round of Adepts, and I guess very shortly he has to get ready to really fight into this and get ready to engage. Peppy doesn't really have the army supply to contest right now. A couple of probes getting shot down by Corrosive Bars as well. Full work is killed so far with these uh, battles. Just little bits and pieces as Peppy will back away. Has taken a little bit of a worker lead behind this, of course, a little bit struggling in terms of uh, income. Has been throughout, actually, and that gold base is obviously helping as uh, Protoss play out too, although he is losing some workers there now. But Peppy doing a good job harassing, will just back away and probably now has the chance to um, probably now has the chance to just gather up together once more and just uh, rebuild a few more units and just get ready to fight against those units of NXZ. NXZ continue to come through the top side. We're going to be seeing the Robo Facility will finish up in a few moments as well on this third base. So Robo Facility will finish on up and over will continue to the top. You can see one overlook picked off already and and again, Ling's Roaches and Ravages from Peppy, looking to see what else is going on. And that's dropping down from Peppy as well up in the main base. So, setting up into that, we're going to be seeing the Warp Prism on the way out too, from NXZ. So, setting up this Warp Prism, and we are just going to be seeing these units continuing to get set to keep on pushing forward. So, I'm going to try and keep on pushing forward here over the next few moments, and look to see what else is happening. These Adapts are going to go up in towards the main base. And uh, we're going to be seeing these Roaches and Ravages going to turn to fight once again. And we're just going to be seeing these uh, Zerglings coming into Surround, cleaning up a lot of these Adepts right from the get-go. A couple of Force Fields coming down. And again, Roaches and Ravages seeing what else they can get up to. Corrosive Piles will drop, and some Force Fields getting popped here right away. I'm just going to be seeing the uh, units just pushing and push back. Peppy holds on, and NXZ is going to have to come back in towards the center of the map. Plus one finishing up for Peppy now as well, so he's going to have a little bit more oomph on those Zerglings and the Banelings too, which he's looking ahead into. Bane speed starts up, he just doesn't have anything just yet. Pushing forwards once more, here we go. Adepts at the front actually going down pretty quick. Good conquer for Peppy against what is very clumped up and kind of, you know, he's kind of not, it's not just an anti-concave basically for uh, NXZ. Run room with a lot of units that get in range and then a lot of units that still aren't in range at the same time. Corrosive Bows coming down, it's nice Bows into the center of the army. And again, NXZ hangs himself having to push back. You can see a couple of Force Fields coming down, goes off a couple of Roaches with those, but not really much being, uh, progress being made. Now, a little bit of Warp Prism playing to the main, we'll see a lot of Adepts actually getting rid of a lot of drones so far. At the same time, fourth phase of the Protoss player is going to be identified and spotted by these Zerglings, so he sees that right away. These few Adepts will not be able to make it out through the Warp Prism. There's just not enough space inside, as you can see the Pylon going down. Will he get the Nexus as well? Units are starting to come in. Oh, he's not target firing, so the Lings will actually move on to the Stalkers. Actually would have been really close. I actually think he might have killed it. So that is very unfortunate. A very smart move to realize when he isn't going to get it, though, that he can pull this Overlord away and keep it alive. Fourth base for Peppy has been fairly, uh, much, uh, very much so just untouched up until now. Nothing coming in from our... Uh, Protoss player to really try and uh, harass that location or anything. I'm just going to be seeing a few more Adepts warping in once again. Plus two melee attack going to be coming down now from Peppy 2. I'm just going to be seeing Roach Speed finishing up as well. So Roach Speed going to be finishing. These Zerglings continuing to move around. More units continue to move through the center. As it's again NXZ looking to make an aggressive attack happen very shortly, but really Peppy should be prepared. Like he's got Bane Speed now too. He's got Roach Speed. So his units are just so much faster than they have been in previous fights. Has to be careful. Doesn't want to run too far forwards. 
As Ling set up to counterattack in towards this fourth base as well, which could get so much done. Banes aren't ready just yet as this attack does begin. There they are coming in just a little bit too late. Force fields continue to come on it. And he needs to start popping through a few of those cross fields with the Biles to allow those Banes to reach their final destination. Well, this needs to be a little bit careful with the engagements, but still, for the most part, Peppy seems to have the units he needs. He's with these Lings and Banes, he actually starts to connect in. The Adepts are clumped, as are the Banes. Good damage done already, and some more Banes from the uh, Northern side now. He cleans up a lot of this, and in fact, Peppy just completely shuts this down. Picks off one more Adept, and there's only really the Immortal and these Stalkers left over. I'm just going to be seeing more units coming in from the left-hand side, and just going to stream on in to try and pick off the Immortal, the Stalkers, and all the rest. As here we go, Peppy. Is just going to be in so much trouble, I think, here. As we're going to be seeing these Stalkers from NXZ joining up together. We're going to be seeing these Zerglings down to the bottom right-hand side as well. Looking to see what else is up also. Ravagers continue to morph in right now from Peppy as he gets set to keep on going here over the next few minutes. Lings, Roach, and some Ravagers all gathering up together. Some probes getting picked off here as we see... Ravagers looking to see what they can get up to to the northern siders. Well, here we go. Lings, Roach, and Ravagers are going to move in down to the south. And, well, they are already starting to target down this Nexus. Nexus taking a lot of damage here right from the get-go. Nexus is going to go down, and that's the fourth base dead. A lot of these probes are going to go down, too, as they are just standing fighting. So probes are falling at the same time. NXZ is counterattacking. Peppy has to get back in position. A lot of his Ravagers are out of location here. His Zerglings obviously all the way to the right-hand side as well. He has what he needs to defend this, but it's not in the right place. So he needs to get it into the right place right now. And that's what he's trying to do. As here we go. The Zerglings stream on in. The Ravagers are back as well. The Corrosive Bowser are hitting more Zerglings than Stalkers. But he's got these units trapped. The Blink is not good enough. He will not get away. And Peppy is going to clean on up here in game number one. At the same time, Adepts in the main doing a bit more damage. Although killing off this Extractor will not be the continuation of that which he would like. He's going to be seeing this last Stalker still being chased. It has a Blink. Where does he... You, you can't fly, Stalker, buddy. I'm sorry to break this to you, but you can't fly. You're not a flying unit. You can't go over there. He is on the way up as well. Lurk again on the way down. Peppy has enough. It's GG from NXC. Peppy does wrong. But I think it's more responsible if I pay my rent first and then crowdfund for beer later. So what you can think of it as is basically once the faster we fill up the rent bar, the sooner we can spend money on alcohol. Perfect, right? Good stuff. So. Let's uh, kick on into this second game and get ready to introduce the players. So the top right hand side, our purple Protoss, is going to be NXZ. Down one game in this best of two, or in this two set of games. I just... people. Some people just accept that we can call it a best of two. Some people are like, best of two, lol. Um, that's not a best of two. <laughs> like, oh, it, it's. I just don't know what to say for the best. Anyways, we have to this bottom right hand side of the map. From Exile 5, the Green Zerg player, it is Peppy. So, jumping on into game number two here, we're going to see a probe is just going to be moving over to the side and is getting ready to. Well, I'm not sure what it's actually going to do. It's uh, been scouting here early on, but I'm not sure what exactly the next move is. This is going to be, by the way, Peppy's map pick, so he's uh, going to be. Uh, Hoping to take a win here as well, obviously, having uh, won on his opponent's map pick already. That's always a great start. As we see these two Zerglings coming down, I'm going to start chasing that probe away. So probe gets chased away right now. These two Zerglings continue to give chase. Probe is going to actually take a quick uh, turn around. Still being chased by the couple of links. Nexus is about 75% of the way done. An Evo Chamber from Peppy as well now coming down just behind the mineral line. I'm just going to be seeing the, uh, well, with the Evo Chamber, I mean, does he want to get aggressive early? He's only on 19 drones. He's making a couple more, which is 21. But is this going to be that switch up into a mass of Zerglings? Whirlwind is an interesting one for it because it's a wide ramp, but dropping into the main is very, very difficult. Very, very difficult. We're going to see a few more drones on the way, so he isn't going to go for that. Just the super fast plus one melee upgrade. 
So as we wait for this game to develop, Twilight Council on the way, by the way, for our Protoss right here at the front, looking to be a similar build to the last game. We'd like to give a special shout out as well to someone who I've just seen in the chat. He's currently spamming a lot of SCTI hearts, but you guys should spam a lot of SCTI hearts for him. Sturmcarton has once again uh, pledged a huge amount on Patreon in the past month, so big thank you to Sturmcarton. It's a bit odd because shouting out Patreon users is not easy. It's not something we can do super often. Um, so I try to shout them out whenever they're around, whenever I spot them and remember to. But a special shout out to Sturmcarton, especially because he is our largest pledge on Patreon right now. Unless I'm completely mistaken and someone else is and I <laughs> completely screwed that up and they just swapped without me noticing, but thank you very much Sturmcarton for that support over there. I appreciate it. I thought I'd pay the Alcon with my Patreon. Yeah, exactly. You had to. Look at that. Look at me shouting out the guy and then he mentions the Patreon. Perfect. Yeah, you pay the alcohol with your Patreon. How about that? That is a good deal. Anyways, um, we set up into this and we do see just the resonating glaives on the way down from NXZ. The free gates coming on up. And well, lots of links being made now that that plus one melee is about to kick in. So it's going to be aggression just a little bit later with a few more drones behind it. Third hatchery going to be finishing now as well. That will mostly just act as a way to kind of get more injects on the map and uh, more lava on the way out. As we're just going to be seeing the uh, Zerglings coming in towards the top side of the map here now. Very interestingly, NXZ expanding towards his opponent, which is obviously to allow him to continue being aggressive much more easily. It's something you kind of want to do sometimes, a lot of the time as a Terran player, not so sure about it as a Protoss. It can backfire quite quickly. As we're going to be seeing these uh, two Zerglings going to move forwards, and well, the wall is not complete. There's a gap to the left hand side, and so Zerglings are already streaming in. No pylon near the mineral line, so those probes are already in a lot of trouble. As these adepts over here, well, they're going to actually have a bit of a rough time as well. Yes, there's only Zerglings, but they have plus one melee, so the adepts go down much faster than usual here. Two of them, oh, not quite a second one killed. I mean, it's just the fact these Lings now go into the main base, and they're still not going to be dealt with. More Lings popping out. It's actually a weird situation because these adepts are doing more than I thought over on this side. Let me see these adepts do shade forwards and queens continue to take a little bit of damage. One queen will go down. He targets down one adept over there. Gonna be seeing these two adepts back at home are gonna fall as well. So much lost time, mining time right now for NXZ pulling his probes around, but he's still mining more than Peppy. As Peppy is actually, I guess, losing mining time as well. Oversaturated on the main base as he pulled away from those adepts. So both players losing a lot of mining time, but it feels as though NXZ will stabilize and. It feels as though NXZ is in a better position to stabilize from because his build is very standard, whereas Peppy's build was designed to do damage and take a lead from there. And as we're going to be seeing the uh, few sentries just sat on the third base. A few lings coming forward. A couple of banes now starting to morph in as well right here. So starting to morph those in and we're going to be seeing this mothership called just sitting out the front. Ling's going to run up and they're already starting to target down the pylon at the front, which will actually unpower, I think, one of these gateways. To the right hand side, it does indeed. He tries to bust on through with these veins, by the way, and he is going to get some good damage done. Is it enough to keep on busting? The pylon overcharge is going to put out a lot of damage, but it's starting to fall. As the pylon goes down, the adept has more surface area to be surrounded. Ling is actually just going to die for the main. Another pylon coming up here and actually going to block the sentries out. No, guys, you're not allowed to get in here and help out. No way. Cancels that pylon as the units now do get a chance to come on in. Five workers killed. Ling's going to sit in the main, just work their way through the Nexus Force units to come all the way up here. Peppy behind this, starting up a few more drones, going into his lair. As finally, these Zergons will get taken down. We'll maybe try and grab another probe or so towards the very end, but that should be about it. A couple of more Zergons getting targeted down here, and we're going to be seeing them diving back down towards the natural expansion, where they might actually pick up one more probe kill. Micro is good so far, it's good again, the probes are just not going to be able to, sorry, the lings are just not going to be able to pick off that final probe, the probes do manage to save their buddy, and that's a pretty big, uh, pretty big victory. The model on the way out, still over here, so getting a couple more of these going, I'm not sure if that was a bailing or what, but another probe going down, some more zerglings gathering up together, but the drone count always increasing, as Peppy will continue to play Ling Bane for now, it would seem, so continue to uh, set up into that, and it's going to be seeing those Zerglings sitting out the front. Hydra's Den is uh, coming up as well on the natural expansion. Is and these Adept Sentries and a couple of Immortals from NXZ just going to be sat just uh, outside of the creep spread. Another gateway uh, coming down. A couple of gateways coming down. Now, I mean, that's sort of expected at this point. We've been on free gates forever. Just because he's been losing so much income, so much mining time from running those probes around, hasn't really had the free base economy, which he would otherwise look to see. So it's going to be seeing this uh, Warp Prism on the way up right now from the Robo Facility and 
And again, just bits and pieces going on behind this. I think the most important thing is obviously the Hydra Den, which is finished. Muscular Augments on the way. And so we're going to be seeing quite a lot of Hydras here early on. As the drone just going to move over to the left-hand side and I guess pop this hatchery down over to the left. So drone going to pop this hatchery down and just going to be seeing these uh, adept sentries and immortals continuing to move on forwards. Continuing to advance in towards the creep spread here at the front. Lings and Hydras looking to see what's going on and just looking to see... Uh, what might happen? He's actually going to pull up this ramp as some force fields come down very, very quickly. I'm just going to continue over to the left-hand side, looking to see what else they might be able to get up to. A few more Banes starting to morph in. Another force field or two dropping down. Not really connecting on too much here. As we actually see this uh, third hatchery is uh, taking a lot of damage. Hydra's going to move up, and they're going to try and target down some of these units. It's the third hatch, which is really in a lot of trouble. These force fields are really kind of scary, and without any kind of uh, ravages, there's no way to break this down. 24 workers killed, and suddenly Peppy has lost an absolute crap ton in this position. So much damage uh, done by Nenexi, who just leaves with, well, everything intact. The only thing he's really missing out on right now is his uh, kind of energy on the sentries, which he used for some of those force fields there. Absolutely crazy. Let me see these uh, units continue to come up towards the upper right hand side. A single Zerg on these. Uh, Oh, Lord just sat here as well. Can you show units lost? Yes, I can. I guess the number of Zerglings is what we're interested in there. 20, 96 Lings lost. It was a lot of Lings that you lost earlier. It's a very weird sort of early stage of the game. Both players doing bits of damage here and there. I actually kind of liked Peppy's position, but he really just got caught out of position towards his third base, and he lost 24 drones, and suddenly he's in a really bad position. So that's um, pretty intense, as we're going to be seeing these Lings, Banes, and Hydras just gathering together to the south side. And NXZ going to continue on his way down to the south side as well. Adept, Stalkers, a couple of mortals, the sentries, all moving down as we're going to be seeing these units turn, getting ready to push forwards and getting ready to fight. We're just going to be seeing these uh, Hydras splitting up the Banes just in the back. And let's see if he's going to be able to make this happen. Nice force fields again from NXZ, and that's the problem. These force fields just keep on being so, so useful here every single time. And it's just, again, the lack of a couple of Ravagers here, so you can't ever bust those down means that it's just so, so difficult. As we're going to see these Banes continue to run on forwards here. Sentries are starting to fall. The Debs are going to actually get taken down by these Bane connections. If he gets all the way up in towards the main base, there's still one Sentry left over, and that force field will just mean that NXZ has so much time to waste around or spend in the main base, cleaning up so much so easily. Hydra's on the low ground, taking a bit more damage. War Prism is here, more force fields at this point. Oops, move commands in towards those Banes and Hydra's there momentarily. I think NXZ just has a bit too much blinking forwards here. Drones will get pulled in again. And without anything to really protect these Hydralists, there isn't that critical mass. Just get rid of these units fast enough. So that looks to be GG most likely in the next couple of moments. One more force field coming down. The Zergans from the back going to get cleaned up as well. Some more Stalkers coming in from the right-hand side. We're going to be seeing this Hatchery continue to take some more damage. But this really should be the end as uh, NXZ will take game number two. And it's going to be 1-1 at the end of this best of two between the players. Again, it doesn't matter the final match score, but each map basically counts as a point. So because it's a round robin group, it's the overall map score players which determines who goes through into the next stage of the competition. Observer goes down, but a couple seconds too late. The lurkers have already been targeted, and that will be GG well played. NXZ taking game number two, and it's one game apiece taken by the players here.